In this video we are going to take a look at C1 Ariete tank and some of the problems the tank has. And to be honest, it's not looking good. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. War Thunder is a military vehicle combat online game. It is free to play on PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Not to mention that it is cross-platform between PC and consoles. The game features an incredible arsenal of more than 1500 historically accurate, playable tanks, aircraft, helicopters and ships from 1930s to 1990s, including the C1 Ariete, which is a topic of this video. Best thing about the game are its realistic physics and one of the most detailed and immersive vehicle damage models in gaming. If you use my link to register, you will receive a bonus, a premium vehicle, tank, aircraft or ship, as well as a 3-day account boost. The game is completely free, so you can start playing immediately. Let's first take a look at protection, because that is the most problematic part about the tank. The hull protection basically doesn't exist. There is not a single anti-tank projectile in the world, modern one of course, that wouldn't be able to penetrate the hull of C1 Ariete. The upper front plate, which is extremely small, consists of two spaced steel plates, with no composite armor in between. And since it is that small, the lower plate takes up a lot of space on frontal armor, and the worst thing about it is that it is a simple 50mm thick plate. Even though it is sloped, it is still really, really weak. It is so bad that even a T-3485 tank would be able to penetrate it. The turret is a different story, in the way that it can actually sustain some older projectiles. But according to various sources, the protection estimates against kinetic energy projectiles range from 450 to 550 mm and some even up to 650 mm, which is definitely an over-exaggeration, since the turret is far thinner when compared to most modern NATO tanks, such as the latest variants of Abrams and Leopard 2 tanks. Nevertheless, even if the protection is 650 mm, it is still bad but 450 to 550 mm sounds more realistic. It is bad because all modern APF SDS projectiles can penetrate that much armor, even from 2 to 4 km range, depending on the projectile of course. The main reason for this weak protection is the fact that the tank was developed in the mid 80s and for that time the protection wouldn't have been that bad, the turret protection is comparable to the tanks of that period but the tank hasn't entered service for at least a decade from its development, and it is still in service pretty much the way it was when it got introduced. With some minor changes and new armor package for the side armor protection that brings the side protection to a more modern level, but the front armor is the same as it has always been, and that is a big problem. Another problem related to the protection is the fact that the tank lacks any safe ammo compartment, all main gun ammunition is stored in the hull around the tank, which means that there is a high risk of ammo detonation completely destroying the tank and killing the crew together with it. Compared to most of NATO tanks that have some form of safe ammo storage, mostly in the rear turret bustle like Abrams, Lapper 2 or Leclerc. The fire control system of C1 Ariete is also not good. The gunner has access to first generation thermal imaging system, which is old. Every modern tank has at least second generation and some like Leopard 2A7 have access to third generation thermal. But the tank commander of C1 doesn't have thermal at all, he can only access gunner's thermal site. The commander does have his own site, but considering that pretty much all new NATO tanks have commander's independent thermal site, this is a serious disadvantage. The tank is armed with a 120mm L44 gun, which is not that bad, but the problem is that it fires an oldish CL3143 APF SDS projectile, which has around 600mm penetration and 2km. That is not bad at all, but it is not good either, since most modern projectiles have more than 700mm of penetration at 2km. But nevertheless, it can penetrate a lot of tanks from the 80s. So, against any country that doesn't have up-to-date tanks, that is good enough. Mobility of the tank is pretty good since it weighs around 55 tons and it is powered by Fiat MTCA V12 diesel engine with 1270 horsepower with maximum torque of 4650 Nm, which is pretty good considering that the tank weighs 55 tons which is like 10 tons less than its NATO counterparts, so mobility is good, but it's not any much different than past NATO tanks. Don't forget to check out War Thunder, where you can take control of many land, air or naval vehicles, 
use the link from the description to get a premium vehicle and a 3 day account boost when you register. Remember, the game is completely free for PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Just download and play. The tank in its current state is not well protected, lacks a modern fire control system, needs a better projectile and a better gun since the L44 is not that good, unless you have some really powerful projectiles, which is not the case with Ariete. There have been plans to upgrade the tank to C1 Ariete MK2, which would have increased armor protection and added Commander's Thermal Sight on top of other improvements. The fate of the upgrade plan is currently unknown. It has been said that the tanks will start getting upgraded in the period between 2015 and 2020, but so far not a single tank has been upgraded to that standard in active service. What will be the fate of C1 Ariete remains to be seen. And that would be all. I hope you enjoyed. If you like my content, you can consider supporting me on Patreon. Every bit helps, and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.